pretty sure at least somebody's gonna be all like, where the fuck were you? Totally. Well, where the fuck were you? I was busy! <laughs> Clearly! There's no such thing as busy for a streamer. I mean, I've got work. You exist purely for the entertainment of your audience. All right, look, if that's how that actually worked, why am I not being paid at least $1,500 a month to stream? <laughs> that's like bare minimum. Uh... God. I would totally be down, though. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, if I was getting paid 1500 a month to stream, yeah, I'd be streaming every day. Pretty much. God, I would want it to be more. I would start at 1500 That's fine. It means I don't have to drive anymore. It means I'm saving a nearly a couple hundred bucks a month. I have to make this announcement post on Discord real quick and then transfer it to Twitter. If only you could, were using Gilded and had that nice little bot that told you and your the audience. The bot is actually broke for some reason, and I'm still figuring that out. Wait, what? Yeah, it broke for some reason. Well, if you give me admin privileges on the server, I can certainly take a look to see what I can figure out. <laughs> Hang on, I have to open up Gilded and I have to post this message first. Well, you're, you're fine. <laughs> I'm not expecting to do it right now anyway. I'm just offering that I can take a look. <laughs> Fair enough. There we go. Copy that so I can post it to Who has messaged Twitter. Well, it wasn't me. I just posted the announcement. Well, I did get a notification for that as well, but no, it was Elaine this time. Now to have your stream in the background so that I can accumulate more and more points. <laughs> Uh Nope. Oh. There we go. Okay. Okay. That's on me for being late though. That's on me. Switch it over. Cause we're all we're ready, we're raring to go. Just positively crazy raring, ready for the grind. Okay, unrestricted parties. F. That instant Q life when you're playing a healer. Um, oh, you want me to exit the town again? Okay, we're back and forth. Yeah, that's, that's what they do for questing. Yeah, that's what they do for questing. Yes, go ahead and go five feet out of town. Now come right back. <laughs> oh, nope, now five feet out of town again. All right, now we want you to go another three feet and back to town. Now put your hands on your head and dance about. <laughs> no, really, we want you to use an emote. Damn it. <laughs> God, I couldn't believe it. The first time I found a quest, it was like, yes, I really want you to use an emote and kneel in front of this person. I was like, what in the fucking world? <laughs> what do you mean you want me to kneel in front of this person? I I have more pride than... Damn it, you win. All right. <laughs> also, wow, this Dark Knight is bold, but it is the level 15 dungeon. Ah, uh, my God, you are going to be standing there and not getting a lot of done in this fight for this poll. I'm going to tell you that now. This, this, this is a bold strategy. I'm not saying bold it's strategy, oh, Cotton. Let's see how it plans out. I'm not saying it's a bad one certainly bold, and I've not seen tanks do this in this dungeon. Granted, again, it's the level 15 dungeon. What, what, sincerely, what do you have to lose? Um, 
ten minutes of your life that you can never get back. Yay, you'd be surprised. I'm sorry, are you a time lord? Maybe. Also, hello, Jindra. How is you? Using that cheers emote. I worked. I worked hard on editing that. He says, "It took me. It took me like an hour." Okay, folks, here to look out. Look out. Hour of hard work is still hard work. That's fair. Glad to have you lurking, Swerve. You enjoy your uh, your workout. I'm doing all right. How is how is you? Good to hear. Bold Dark Knight is bold. I'm just still chuckling <laughs> at my reaction to how crazy everyone can get in reincarnation mode of gunfire reborn. But no, really, though. That's just silly. Yes, Bunny with the right set of skills in <laughs> reincarnation can just. Every bullet do the thing. Why are you making your life difficult? And every single bullet do 10,000 damage in a single shot. With Baron Claw, which is just... Ugh! Ugh, it's gross. Where do I have to go for this quest? Excuse me? Defeat uh, the pirate. It's not giving you an orange little circle, is it? No, it's giving me a timer. I'm gonna use. Oh, there's pirates. Um. Upwards of 50 times a second with the right upgrades on an alert. Ew! Ew, that's so gross! That is absurd! Ah, speaking of gross, I don't want this loot. It's not even worth Grand Company Seals. Of course, I'm the one that's running a leveling roulette, and I'm the one that got stuck with the level 15 dungeon. Which, in all fairness, isn't that bad. I just have, like, two abilities to use, and that's it. It is a sad life as a sage healer at this level. Ooh, another bold strategy. Pulling the trash mob in the room with the boss. Though I'm pretty sure to you, that's a very tame strategy. Okay. Poison, stop that. Stop being poisoned. You're not allowed to be poisoned, okay? so far, because, like, maybe this one I actually have to actively heal. Okay. Eh, Alright. I give this tank some respect. The boldness is paying off. We're going through this a little bit faster, a little bit more fun. No, that's not how this works. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bun Tank. But we do indeed have to go this way. And the game's not that kind. Trust me, I wish it was too.
<sighs> okay, good. But here's hoping that, like... Uh, I get my little side project finished and upload it to YouTube for once, because I've been la leaving that dormant for too long. What side project? The one I was talking to you about earlier, the uh, cloud-built one. Oh, right. Because, again, just they, they took it off of Steam. They unlisted it. I don't know why. They're assholes for doing it. When they do that. Yeah, and I know it's not Coilworks' fault. It has to be their publisher. Plus, I've also had a hankering to play more Cloud Build, and I figured why not record it. Just, it just gives me an excuse to pretend I'm actually good at the game. Validation. <laughs> no, not really. I think, what did I, what did I call myself in, like, the last recording session I had. I think I called myself uh, an... an impassioned amateur or something along those lines. Sounds about right. In most situations. <laughs> okay, sound effects. Drop that to like 60. System sounds. Oh yeah, you're still balancing your audio for this game. Yeah, because I was like, oh, this is perfectly fine. And then I had, like, a quest that's like, oh, here's a cutscene, followed by, like, I don't know, the level 18's equivalent of a boss. And I, I couldn't, like, hear you at all. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, fair. Pretty sure my game is coming very quietly because I've had to adjust my overall stream audio. To Oh, Wow, okay, that's rude. That area's wall was blocking me from clicking on the thing. How rude. Oh. Lorite Rose is a character name in this dungeon I'm with. Lorite Rose. That's an interesting okay. name. Do some DiMaggio's to a boss real quick. Like, though I would gripe that I only had two actions this entire dungeon, this dungeon's good for leveling roulette because all the EXP for very little work. Ow. Damn it, bird. I mean, you told your bird to stop, and it clearly hasn't worked. No. No, it has not. Okay, what do you want me to do? Uh, Deliver... Oh, okay. I was gonna say, run around in a circle. <laughs> yeah! You know, that's not a bad guess for this uh, game. <laughs> for the current quest level that you're at. Though, I, I will admit, as much as I'm giving it shit about that, it's not the only MMO that does this at early levels. Yes, run in a circle. <laughs> Alright, All right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, by far, not the only MMO that's guilty of that. <laughs> All right, Rose, any relation to Regulent Rose? No, no, Fluorite. Fluorite Rose. And maybe? Maybe. I don't I don't know who that, like, Taylor's relatives are. For all I know, he could be related to a Lollafell. Oh, what do you do? Opinions on Lalafells. I have to ask you this. Oh, I think I think I think she's hyper focused. I honestly I'm not sure what you meant. The little short people race. I don't know how many you've encountered so far. Oh, they honestly there's hilarious. <laughs> Cuz um I, I've encountered a couple, but not many in the questing, um, but I was watching Elaine play, and she 
decided to make a gladiator for her solo character. And whatever city that is, um, old Da or whatever that yeah. that she walks into the you know little adventures guild bar area, and there's this one of those people that looks like has the stereotypically twirly mustache of an evil person <laughs> and an eye patch. Looked absolutely fucking hilarious. I busted out <laughs> laughing seeing that. And Elaine was like, "I'm trying to take this seriously," and that ended up laughing with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just... they're ridiculous people. They they also have quite a walk style cycle. If you watch them walk, oh my god, I can imagine. Because Swerve's right, it is a walk of. Well, you can't tell by the way I use my walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're a great race. I I love that little race. They're like gnomes and wow, but honestly, funnier. And. Though puntable, you don't want to punt them. Most of them. I feel like they'd break your arms. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, though. You're not... Like, yeah, you might punt them once, but then they get up and, like, summon a giant golem or something to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, Chaz. You're fucking killing me here. <laughs> because, again, you're not wrong. Actually, for the longest time, when um, your base racial stats mattered, uh, Lalafels were commonly chosen for people that wanted to play magic users. So you would see the summoner Lalafell. So it was probably more than likely, if you punted that Lalafell, it was your last mistake. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Burp. Alright, I was just gonna exclusively grind, but I got a level, so I guess that means I gotta run to the Alamegan Quarter and do my roll quest. <sighs> but yeah, I started in Ulda, and for the longest time, I was not a fan of their race, and I swore every Lollapel was evil. They've grown on me. Honestly, I think they might all be evil, but not for... <laughs> <laughs> They're not, like, evil in the way that, like, a typical villain is. They're evil because they get punted too often. <laughs> Oh, admittedly, that might not be wrong for all I know. Gods. And to think, there's a part of me that was like, oh yeah, for the Final Fantasy VII RPG setting that I wanted to do, let's just cross it with Final Fantasy XIV. Let's just allow people to be the Final Fantasy XIV races. So there would be Lalafels in that setting. I think there would be several in your group that would play them. No, if for only the meme factor, though. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh goodness, Arnvald, you sweetheart. Oh, bye, Simon. Add Lilykin to your Final Fantasy tabletop RPG or walk? Oh, what the fuck? We're Lilykin. I think that's the Final Fantasy XI race, specifically. World of Final Fantasy. Oh. Oh. Now that's a meme worthy race. have to finish that game. I still want that game. Because it's... 
It's basically Final Fantasy, but if Pokemon. I'm sorry, how do you cross Final Fantasy and Pokemon? You make it so your primary objective is um, recruiting monsters on your team from the world of Final Fantasy. I feel like with most of the monsters, that's just slavery with extra steps. <laughs> what the fuck? Um. All right, that's not entirely wrong. Pretty sure I'm in the last dungeon of your first run or something. It's giving me huge no new game plus and multiple story routes and stuff. I mean, maybe it does, because like again. I haven't played World of Final Fantasy. I've only seen bits and bobs of it. I do want to play it, though. Even though initially I was very put off by its more or less chibi-esque aesthetic. And also the protagonists outside of their miniaturized form look like fucking Kingdom Hearts protagonists. There, I said it. Oh no, here come the haters. You can see them on their train. Choo-choo! Mana doesn't like Kingdom Hearts! It's more so I'm just tired of how fucking convoluted the plot is. Yeah, I'm glad that Five Nights at Freddy's hasn't gotten there. Otherwise, I'd feel the same about that franchise. <laughs> Though hello. that one's getting pretty fucking close. Right! Also, hello, Squirrel, and you have and it's cute. I'm glad you've played it and you like the game. I should play it and also possibly like the game. What is a Marauder? Marauder is an axe-wielding tank class. Like, big two-handed axe or like axe and shield? A big two-handed axe. Okay, I might pick that up then. Really? I don't like sh sword and board tanks, but if you give me a big old two-handed weapon, yeah, I could probably get behind that one. I will warn you, even amongst the tanks, which are relatively simple, like, priority orders and such, and, like, simple rotations, Marauder upgrading into Warrior is the easiest and arguably the most boring. Ah. So, though you may not like sword and board tanks, if you're looking for a tank that will keep you interested in what it does outside of using its off global cooldowns to not die it it's it's not really that exciting though it well damn. does have mad motherfucking sustain it's dragging your feet on the platinum being excessively cute and looking like kingdom hearts characters seems like good kinds of problems to have to be fair as over-designed as Sora has gotten in some games, his character design is kind of on point. And the only negative you found about the game is that I'll be right back. Shatoto is in it. Wow! Poor fans of Final Fantasy XI. That one I do know is a Final Fantasy XI character. And Shatoto's voice is really annoying. Or no, is Shatoto? Apparently, I can't spell. Yeah, that's the Final Fantasy XI character. That is very much the Final Fantasy XI character. Gentoto bothers me because she is so close to being a character I would love, only stop by being a raging bitch. Did I keep see all the character designs in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross? No. Should I? Will this change my opinion of character design in Kingdom Hearts as a whole? I don't know why I appreciate that this... No. <laughs> Alright, fair.
They start to make Sora's designs look good. <laughs> but she's small and cute and she speaks in rhyme. She's an accomplished mage, but her personality is so garbage. Sorry, I bumped my microphone. So she's Grunt Tilda then. What you're telling me is she's Grunt Tilda. He's even willing to help people on a whim, but she will be a massive jerk the whole time. So she's a nicer Grunt Tilda. Look, when you start craving Roxas's garb, you have a problem. Oh, yeah. Roxas is overdesigned as hell. Shitoto is also capable of backing up her attitude. This is true. Gruntilda can't. And that's why in Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and nuts and bolts, I guess, Gruntilda got her ass handed to her. More talking about his garb while a part of Organization 13. Oh, okay. I'm back. Welcome back. So, I have a question. I probably have an answer. Why do cats try to murder you just because you're walking? <laughs> uh, I don't know. To make sure that you won't die when attacked by a predator? <laughs> yeah, but what predator is just going to try to trip you? Um, A badger. Would a cat see that as a predator? Possibly? Okay, uh, fair. Because cats are still territorial predators. Okay, fair. You, okay. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. I think no. Why do you eat your food so aggressively? <laughs> you mad? Is that what's going on, Jazz? Man, this is the good. What's up? Oh, just this roll quest. It's it. It's got good vibes. What roll? Ah, uh, healer. Ah, yeah, that one should have good vibes. I mean, consider the expansion that the uh, roll quest is a part of. In all likelihood, it could have totally not had good vibes. At least sure. Until the t tail end. Doing Sage? Well, no, and yes. You know, it's kind of weird. 
every heal or game where I've healers have been a thing in that I've played always have super good vibes for the healers. Like, oh yeah, you know, healing is a chill thing. The people <laughs> that are doing it are like pious and like I have never met a healer that is not angry. <laughs> yeah, and you probably never will. <laughs> every single healer I have ever met angriest motherfucker in the room because you will not stop being a dumbass and standing in the fire yeah 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 that's me <laughs> and you can tell because i've played healer i've also played tank i also played dps i know what i'm doing why don't you <laughs> I love that about healers, though. The, the games always try to be like, oh yeah, they're so wonderful, nice people, they're calm. No, no, they're not. <laughs> Only in Dungeons and Dragons are they like that. That's what you want them to be like. <laughs> and I'm sorry, even in D&D, I'm not a very happy healer most of the time when I play a healer character. <laughs> there. What do you mean you stood, walked right up to the dragon and demanded he hand you his hoard of gold? But you didn't expect to be lit on fire for that one, really? 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 People play like such dumbasses in D&D. <laughs> they do. There's one NPC healer type who is kinda angry in Fantasy Star Online 2. Alright, duly noted. The, see, that's a real healer. <laughs> they know. <laughs> they know. They've seen some shit. But see, the dev team had a healer on it. <laughs> I... Okay, Fancy Star Online 2 was a fairly early MMORPG. I want to say... No. No, Fantasy Star Online 2, isn't that... Didn't that come out recently? Neon Genesis was a, like added add-on expansion thingy that was recent, but otherwise, no. Fantasy Star Online 2's been around since, god, I I want to say mid-2000s. Oh, I'm thinking of another one, then. Um, either way, they had someone who played a healer on their dev team. Probably. Fantasy Star Online 2 is about the same age as Final Fantasy 14, is it? Fantasy Star Online was mid 2000s, and that was on the Dreamcast. I know that much. That's Sorry, wild. how the fuck do you have an MMO on the Dreamcast? I feel like that just doesn't work. You'd be surprised. Because the Dreamcast was actually an internet possible console. Really? Yeah. Well,. Shit, I feel like they wasted development time trying to make an MMO for that system, but okay. Uh, people actually liked it, and to this day, you can technically play Fancy Star Online single player. Huh. Well, that's neat. Yeah, 56k modem. God damn it. P I mean, people even speedrun Fancy Star Online. Well, I'm sorry, they'll speed run anything. <laughs> You're not wrong. And I, people, like, Security Breach, which is a horror game, was out for less than a week, and speedrunners were already, like, trying to set world records for that. Fantasy Star Online 2 is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I haven't played too much of it. And no worries, it's fine. We're working out, but we're still lurking. I appreciate the lurk. Neon Genesis is kind of getting dunked on for the slow progression of additional content. Yeah, I look at that and I kind of think, y'all saw what Genshin Impact was doing, and y'all saw what Breath of the Wild did, and you wanted to pull that. And you didn't have a plan outside of that, did you? You just wanted to pretend to be the next big thing. Now, to be fair, Neon Genesis is pretty fun. I just kind of quickly got... 
burnt out and overwhelmed by Fantasy Star Online 2. I guess I wasn't really burnt out. I was, eh. It was more overwhelmed. Left a sour taste in my mouth. I've played most of these things we're talking about now. So I have absolutely no context for if they're... for any of it. I mean, Fantasy Star Online 2 is free to play, but like, it's an action... Uh, it's an action RPG for its combat. You're going to enjoy seeing Monarch speedruns in like three months. Because you dial up random encounters with each possible phone number, nine digits of 12 characters, having a fixed one. What the fuck? This, what? Okay, you were talking about this game another time, Jinra. What is this monarch? Like, what? This sounds ama- this sounds fascinating. Yeah, this does. Fantasy Star Online 2 main kind of got killed by the lead-up to Neon Genesis, and Neon Genesis flopped! Yeah! Sega! Sega, you fucked up. That's not the first time they've really done that, either. I know. Like, that seems to be a kind of problem for them. It's kind of a lot. The reason I stopped playing Fantasy Online 2 is because of how overwhelming the daily content was. That my friend, friends made it seem like I should always be doing, and I never got a chance to actually do anything story-ish. The most fun I had with Fantasy Star Online 2 was, um, I went to the casino one time, and then I just fucked around there for, like, the entire session. That's sad. I mean... <laughs> like, the content itself was actually fun. Like, going in and doing quests... But it was instanced, and you had to constantly, like, if you wanted to run this thing, it was basically a little dungeon, and you ran through it, and then you were done. And if there were quests associated with it, well done. You probably cleared one or two of them on your way through. It's a weird strategy tactics game where you... S okay, okay, so this is Monarch. It's a weird strategy tactics game where your school got isolated by a barrier and filled with madness caused m causing mist... Then you make a pact with a demonic-looking stuffed bunny to fix it. I'm sorry, what? The f I go on. Right? <laughs> you go on there. That sounds kind of interesting. That sounds crazy. Go on. Also, by making a pact, you grab it by the ears and threaten it till it agrees. Ah, yes, that's how you get someone to agree to do what you want them to do. <laughs> Threatening them. Look, I don't know what you're talking about, our Stellaris game. <laughs> okay, okay, I deserve that. <laughs> he didn't threaten you this time, though. This time, at least. Oh, you weren't watching my stream. You weren't watching my end. Did you feel threatened? Um, no, I didn't feel threatened by you, no. It's, uh, it's Lucas that, um, did not appreciate some early game actions I may have committed to. Oh, yeah, he was all sorts of wanting to go to war with you. And I was like, no, I'm kind of allies with Mana. I'm just not doing that. And that got him to chill. <laughs> Because he's like, I can't fight Mana one on one. <laughs> Why are you so riled up, huh? I mean, the second I got that territory, I'm like, all right, fortify that border. <laughs> yeah, I saw you had like a fleet of like 3,700 or so on his border, like immediately. <laughs> yep. The demo is out on Switch and takes like two hours to go through. All right, noted. I honestly love how much of the game has to offer, but then like. 
after my inventory started to fill up. Yep, found that problem. Uh, suddenly there was a lot of do A with X and B with Y, but if Y is Z, then do C with it, and, and it just got to be so much inventory management that I didn't want to handle it. Yep! Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about, Swerve, when it comes to Fantasy Star Online 2. Famous problem with free-to-play MMOs, especially ones that like to monetize much of their systems around stuff like that. Like, I don't think there's directly a inventory extension, like, to up your backpack size, but they have a storage, but you can only store so much. And then they demand that you manage all of your inventories. I still think the best part of Fantasy Star Online 2 is the real bosses. You're not wrong. Because you drag you you like help me I say drag. You help me through some of that. My god, the spectacle. Holy shit. Like Sage? Jinra and I fought a like medieval dragon. Wonderful. In a sci-fi game. Yeah, actually, that that almost drew me to the game. I kind of know what enemy you're talking about, and I saw a video about it. That almost got me to install it. <laughs> the... Like, that alone. <laughs> right? Ah, uh, nine's not enough moose. The bosses were... The bosses were so cool, though. And, like, one of them was, like, a line of subway cars turned into a fucking Hydra. I'm sorry, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, that was, like, just an area boss, not, like, a raid boss or anything. Another one? You fought the battleship Yamato for another boss? Except it was, like, able to fly and was possessed? It, it was a thing. The, the, okay. Sure. You fought a fucking dread... Yeah, there it is. Dreadnought Battleship single-handedly got to tear apart piece by piece. Battleship Yamato was also goddamn awesome. Train Ghidorah, it's Ghidorah from Godzilla, but made out of trains. Yep. Oh. Wonderful. <laughs> to be fair to Fantasy Star Online 2, a lot of its bosses were batshit crazy. But they were fun. Just, there's so much that holds the game back, unfortunately. And much of it is, like, a symptom of being a free-to-play game. Hmm. Would you believe that I was talking about something other than Yamato at first? Oh, you were? There are two bosses that are battleships? Oh, shit. I mean, still, I had. When it comes to Final Fantasy, uh. Doom Train, mic drop. You fight a fucking train. And you know about that one, Sage. I've talked your ear off about it. Yes, you have. Or an airship in a hangar. First one might have been a tank. And we didn't even do my favorite boss, Persona the Mask. Really? Please, is is that is that a tie-in with like Persona? Because Sega owns Persona. Well, the IP Makes anyway. Makes to me. Because it goes through various phases, representing the other bosses. Ah, I see. I'm gonna suplex that mofo. I wish I could, but I don't have suplex. Persona the Master was cool. It wasn't super tough. But the first time I fought him, he rocked my shit. Amazingly, no. Really? That's surprising. I'm going to give these guys an opportunity to actually collect some of these globs of moose slime since they came here a little late. I'm just doing fates myself. Though, unlike you, once you join a free grand company, I've got different reasons for doing these fates. Grinding for XP? Well, yes. But also because there's a, a system way later on that my... Not OCD, but OCD brain is like, I gotta, I gotta fill that out. I gotta make sure it's filled. I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta do this thing. 
You know, like how you just see a bunch of quests and you gotta go do them because they're there. Yeah, I want to give these people, like, the opportunity because I'm pretty sure once I turn in... Oh, actually, surprisingly, no. That said, they did have a Persona 5 event where you could get an outfit and turn into Morgana and watch Persona 5 dancing at night versions of Rivers in the Desert and another song to be performed in the hub. I was aware they had a Persona 5 event in uh, Fantasy Star Online 2. I mean, they, for a couple of times, had a... Sonic the Hedgehog collaboration. Because it's Sega, and of course they they have to. Like this 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 is not news to me. <laughs> Naturally. Although interestingly, that event also came with I think a GM or two playing as Sonic and Tails. And they actually interacted with the community. Say the worst Persona, or Persona, Fantasy Star Online 2 boss is Apprent Apprentice the Vernal. That wasn't a boss that we did, was it, Jindra? Because the lead up's fudging long. God, all the AoEs. No, it's not one I do with you. Okay. Because I reckon if I don't remember all the bosses that we did together, you probably do. Bolt. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night, Swerve. Thanks for sticking around for as long as you did. Because the goddamn 30 minute long tower defense section that precedes the boss that is annoying to do without a full party. I'm. I'm sorry? What? What the fladoodle? What the fladoodle door? How dare you use these words? I will say what I will, Sage. Fladoodly doodly darp you. Wow. We're, we're going there, huh? Yep, we're going there. Oh, God. I had to sink down for this one. Cardi got knocked off me. No, it is my strength. It is my immortality against the boss because I am a healer. Specifically one that heals every time I attack the target. Wait, what? Oh. Oh good, the cavalry's arrived. dare I get good I'm working on it the sage is hard yeah. yo bird I don't know what you're talking about I mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right I walked into that one 
<laughs> no, why are there no fate spawn? What the flood doodle? <laughs> Oh, there's one. Okay. Shoo! We're good. We're good! Everybody, we're good. We're fine. Wait, I took this quest to find a cat? <laughs> I mean, yeah, why else do you think you took that quest? I honestly kind of skimmed through the dialogue, and I knew I was looking for something, but I didn't realize it was a cat, and apparently the next quest, I think, is a dog. Why did I take these quests? Wait a minute, don't I have better things to do with my time? I mean, do you? You are an Apparently adventurer. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Do you do you not like money as an adventurer? I don't even think they're offering that much money for this. Let's see. This one gives nope, no money in here. No. Um and uh Nope, no money for that one either. So I, I get a cat and a dog. As pets, it looks like, maybe? Oh yeah, as minions. Alright, these fuckers actually hurt! Ow, 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 ow. Maybe I shouldn't pull the entire group this time. Ow! Ha! You fools! I am a sage! I have a shield! Holy fuck, you guys hurt. I did Elder, Profound Darkness, Battleship Yamato, Tree Dude, and Dragon with you, and the Tree Dude was Deus Esca. Right, because that guy was an allegory for a godly figure or some shit. Because, of course, Chip, it's a Japanese RPG. At least one of the bosses has to be a god. There's a fucking dark Jesus. Sweetie. run Circus Tower at this rate. Sorry about episode 2 of Fantasy Online 2 World. World ending threats start becoming daily chores for you. Oh, well, fair enough. Also, I let myself run out of MP. What am I even doing with my life? And the story recognizes that. Oh my Jesus. Okay. Right, that was. I feel like that was something you discussed. We discussed at one point. Because Fantasy Star Online 2 is silly. Thinking about it makes Neon Genesis even weirder and out of left field. Like... Because the thing with Neon Genesis is it starts you back at level 1 and has a different level cap from the rest of the game. Because it's its own, like, different content. Oh, that's... 
That's an interesting thing to think on. There we go. You aren't the same character, essentially. But I look the same! Plus, I feel like the story is incongruous with, like, what the player goes through. Like, in a sense that, like, all the time you spent doing... That stuff in Fantasy Star Online 2 is all for naught. Like, oh yeah, all this story that you just, like, painstakingly went through before you released this content expansion? Yeah, it doesn't matter! Like, you know? It's a... It's a very, very odd move, move I feel like, on Sega's part. I don't know, it just... doesn't strike me as... particularly amazing storytelling. Well, the other story fans are only too proper. You kind of murder, murder the embodiment of evil, end of the universe or some such. So they peaked. What you're telling me is that they peaked. Because where the fuck do you go from there? Although, to be fair, having witnessed the end of Endwalker, I'm still trying to figure out where the fuck they're gonna go with this story. They know I don't. Alright, one more of these. One more of these and I'm probably gonna run a dungeon slash raid. Who's the fuck? Oh, there was a meme posted in Discord. Elaine also briefly joined, and then I pointed out you were streaming, so decided to hop off. Oh, okay. How do I summon my minion? I got two minions. Uh, that's gonna be character menu? Like, okay. on the menu bar itself. Oh, on me. There's a little oh. button that says character. Minion guide. Okay. Yep. I summon the cat. Okay. I would say you have your own little frumpkin, but you wouldn't understand that one. Nope. No idea what you meant by frumpkin. It's, that one's a critical role thing. Yeah, I... God, I want to like that show, and I want to get into it, but every time I try to watch it, I get through, like, the first episode, like, halfway through, I think, and then I'm like, uh, okay, I'm done here. And that's why I listen to it as a podcast. Yeah. Because I am, like, up to episode 63 of Campaign 2, but I haven't watched any of Campaign 1. Which might be what makes it a little bit different, because I don't go back to watch Campaign 1, even though I know at some point I probably will. I feel like Campaign 1 starts off in the middle of something, and that's part of what makes me struggle to want to watch it. Because they, they it, were several sessions in. Yeah, it, and it does, because they start Campaign 1, like, after a bunch of shit that their group Vox Machina is already done. Which at this point... Oh hey, the recently released animation which is on Amazon Prime, which by the way, if you have, you can also use that free subscription on any any Twitch channel if to and including mine, but it doesn't have to be mine. Uh, for a free sub. 
And it's The Legend of Fox Machina, which is like a whole animated series before they did their Critical Role podcast live stream thing. Hmm. And then I think we'll also cover what they did on the podcast live stream thing after the first season, probably. That would be really cool, actually. I might start watching that. I mean, I want to watch it. It's, one, it's got, like, heavy Avatar vibes, because whoever the fuck they hired for their animating team is um, very good at drawing in that style, and it's already a very appealing style for an animated series. And two, they avoided, well, from what I understand, they've avoided going into children's cartoon territory based on the fact that's on Amazon Prime and not on Netflix or something. Because apparently Amazon gave them more creative freedom, even though it's not the best company in the world. They kind of can see it, though. Yeah. Because uh, according to them, apparently, somebody wanted to grab the Critical Role animated series and be all like, yeah, we want this to be a children's cartoon. I'm sorry, I don't see that one happening. Yeah, neither do I. But also another network wanted to pick it up and be like, yeah, we want this to be like Game of Thrones. And it's like, how do you... What? <laughs> it's not quite that either. <laughs> it's dev it's uh, most assuredly not that. I mean, the shit that they're doing in Campaign 2 might be stretchable into something Game of Thrones-esque. But from what I understand in Campaign 1, not what happens there, no. They're not really about that business as the Mighty Ma- or the Mighty Nine, Fox Machina, Mighty Nine's Campaign 2's group. Which, shockingly, there's not actually nine of them, there's seven. What? <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wait, no, it's six. It's even worse. Why? But it's Mighty I... Nine spelled N E I N. Just, just don't think about it, Sage. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> don't think about it. I give up. <laughs> I just can't come to a, any sort of logic that makes that make sense. Oh. The mobs are murdering me. Maybe I should heal myself. You do have physic. I'm sorry. What happened? It restarted the stupid quest I was doing. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it's making me go through that again. I finish the battle, and then it's like, oh, randomly cut out. And I lost, I guess, and have to redo it. Oh, is this an instanced thing? Yeah, the Faint and Strike defeat the Serpent Reavers. Faint and Strike. Hmm. Not sure we're sure why that would fail you. It it didn't like say a fail, it just literally reset it and started me over. I'm I'm not sure why. But, oh well. What level are you? Uh, 18. And for what quest is this? Faint and Strike. Faint and Strike. At some point I hit Caps Lock. Oh, 
website sticking me to IGN of all fucking websites. All right, so you, you're speaking with wrist flow. So it just randomly restarted? Yeah, I was like halfway through the battle, and then it was like, oh, we're done. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I can move on? Nope. Still speak with him. And it's, it's an instance thing, I reckon. Yeah. Did you maybe move too far away? I'm basically right next to the quest giver. Oh, that's weird. Although sometimes it will... Unless you have to do the fight again. That's weird. I've never heard of that happening. I don't know. I, anytime I play a game, I tend to find weird fucking bugs the first playthrough. And everyone that I talk to is like, I've never heard of that happening. God, you have... Massive, massive energies of a live streamer. I watch it doing that then. <laughs> okay, well, it seems to have worked this time. I think. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, yes. Here's a cutscene, so that means it worked. <laughs> weird. Okay. Very weird. Also, what level quest is this? Level 14. Ooh, okay. You are... Oh. What is this garbage? Okay, you're not too far off away from being able to go freely between the other two cities. Probably not. It, it does feel like I'm coming to an end of, like, the first arc. Um, I don't know what this demon thing is, but hey, I guess I'm murdering this today. Demon thing? Uh, the masked man summoned a demon thing. I, I... I don't know how else to fucking describe that. It's... It's probably a Void Scent. It's a Lesser Gargoyle. Yeah, it's Void Scent. <laughs> it, I guess I can kind of see where they're coming from with Gargoyle. It, it's like the Cobalts, or... Yeah, the Cobalts. They look nothing like what I'd expect a Cobalt to look like. But that's, um... Actually, that comes down to a weird translation error that happened um, when translating Cobalt into Japanese. Yep. I don't remember if I learned that from you or something you linked me. I think you learned it from me. Because it was something I learned, and it's actually something I intend to implement into the homebrew, homebrew setting at some point. So there, there will be both Draconic Cobalts and then not Draconic Cobalts. Interesting. Okay, I am actually going to do Circus Tower. Because if the only thing I grind tonight are fates, I'm going to lose my mind. Not because they're boring, but because I have to, because to do the thing I want to do, I have to do 60 of them. Wonderful. Total. And thankfully, it's a running tally.
Come on, I want to go to Circus Tower. You're a bit grumpy that the Odin Eco didn't make it into the International Fantasy Star Online 2 release. The Odin what now? <laughs> what that do? The Final Fantasy XIV Odin Wandering Emergency Code? Oh, there was a... Really? There was a crossover event between Final Fantasy XIV and Fantasy Star Online 2. That's kind of rad. Meanwhile, Sage is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm focused on this quest. Fair enough. The, the story has me captured, damn it. <laughs> Let it keep you captured is what you're saying. <laughs> huh. Fine. God damn it, you got me fucking hooked on this game. Good! <laughs> Good, I've been fucking telling you! I, and I'm not even at what you call the good part yet, because Realm Reborn is kind of garbage compared to the other expansions. Yes, you told it me. is! But it's, like, good-ish garbage. It, there's a lot of it. That's why it's not as great. God. Oh. Guests in chat, you have no idea how long I've been talking to Sage about Final Fantasy XIV and doing my God, damnedest. God, too long. Absolute damnedest to get her into it. And she was just like, nope. I'm still disappointed that, or, well, not even disappointed. Like, it's fine. We still have to figure it out. But you're on Primal and I'm on Ether. Yeah. But it's because they don't want people making characters on Ether. And they're almost shut down on Primal, too. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people want to play this game. And exactly, Chindra. Mod is real angry. I, I see why, though, people want to play this game now. Like, I was like, eh, it's just another MMO. N not quite. That is a severe understatement to just call Final Fantasy XIV just another MMO. Yeah, it is. Huh. Okay, well. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was in that moment that Sage knew. I fucked up <laughs> by buying this stupid game. <laughs> I'm going to lose hundreds of hours of my life to this, and I will never get them back. But I'm not sure I mind. <laughs> hey, any time spent doing something that you enjoy is not time wasted. This is fair. Also, Paladin, stop dying. Because materia. Oh, oh no. now they're introducing you to like the World of Warcraft equivalent of gem slotting, but it's much. Oh, is that what that is? Okay, never mind. It's much easier though, not nearly as headache-inducing. Okay, well I now have a new chest piece, so I can actually put on a headgear now. Voila. Wait a minute. No, why didn't it put it on? Excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you using the recommended gear equip? Oh, god damn it. It's another one that requires no headpiece. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's going on. 
Yeah. Hey, and also, recommended gear equip? Is that a thing? So if you open your character menu with C, there is actually something in the top left corner. Or not top left, top right. Update gear set. Or no. No, it is top left. Recommended gear. I'm... Uh -huh. I keep mixing up my left and rights, apparently. I know my directions quite well. I just have to hold out my hands first. Well, I'm not going to listen to the recommended gear, and I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. That's fair. I'm sure, I, uh, with the amount of hours I've put into other MMOs, I am sure I can figure this one out gear-wise. Yeah, plus you're super early on. As you might imagine, gear is not nearly as important yet. Oh, yeah. No, half of what I'm wearing is just for fashion glamour anyway. God, you haven't even unlocked actual glamour yet. Which, oh, is, which is transmog. Bell. Yes, game, I know how a shop works. I don't need the pop-up about that. <laughs> Was it your first time actually engaging with a shopkeeper? Yes. Um... Because I was telling those, uh, the sack of, like, coins that, for some reason, they didn't just give me coins. <laughs> and I had fucking 12 of those dumb sacks, so... Oh, are you talking about the, um, the Allegan X, X piece? Like, bronze or copper piece? Yeah, yeah, the bronze ones. <laughs> yeah, so those are, like, an alternative quest, quest reward, usually. That you can, yeah. you can basically take money instead of a piece of equipment. But And I feel like they should have just given me coins and not made me go to a vendor to sell it. Well, it's usually one of the options you can pick, and I think it's supposed to be, like, something or other about being a substitute. And if they made the substitute gill, then I, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the spaghetti goat code it would break and freak out. You know, that probably is the actual answer of why they did it. And, like, it is mildly annoying, but, eh, could be worse. Honestly, as far as MMOs go, that is one of the least egregious wastes of my time I've seen, so it's fine. It's like, here, you have to convert this into money by selling it, but you get the option. It's like, fine, I guess I'll go sell this thing for actual money. I'd do it with gear if you only gave me gear anyway. Yeah. It's like the game acknowledges that, like, yeah, it's either gear or money, so if you want money, you can take money. Just have to sell it first. Oh, I was like, what the fuck is with this guy's head? He's just got a pair of succubi horns on the side of his head. Like, some of the- some people's glamour in this game is... fascinating. I don't know if you've had any encounters with any players wearing very unique ensembles... yet. Alright, to answer your question, no, I haven't really paid attention to players around me. I've seen some players with some absolutely stupid names, <laughs> but I haven't looked at their gear. <laughs> God, you would know if you saw somebody in a very unique ensemble of equipment. There, there are some costume choices that you can do in this game. Okay. Up to and including, up to and included, wearing a pig suit.
Now, I wish I hadn't been muted trying to deal with Chaz, because I think you would have laughed at my reaction to the Admiral showing up in the story. Really? I... Yeah, I... I... W because I was dealing with Chaz and trying to get him to stop screaming, um, I wasn't quite paying attention, and it just showed her, and I'm like, who's this vampire bitch? And then he's like, let me introduce you to the Admiral, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she's a Rogadin, and Rogadin can be quite pale. The fuck is a Rogadin? One of the races in Final Fantasy XIV. Okay. And also one of the class or race options that you skipped over in your character creation process. Yeah, I probably did just skip past them. And I am an ice block. This, this is my life now. I'm... I am just a, a pile of ice. What is CP in the context of the game? CP? CP is crafting point. Well, they have a ring that gives plus eight to that stat. But... Yeah, CP is crafting points. It's for crafting. Oh, I don't need that, then. Yeah, I probably don't want to distract yourself even further by doing something like that. Damon X Machina is free on Epic for a week. Ooh. I already own it on Steam, but I wonder if you could play with people on Steam if you got it on Epic. Probably not. Because that's a good game. Having played copious amounts of multiplayer with Jared on it. Though the multiplayer um, is, relatively speaking, kind of limited. What game? Damon X Machina. Haven't heard of it. Unsurprising. It was initially released as a temporary timed exclusive on Switch. And then it got a PC port. And it's quite a bit of fun. It's a mech battler, basically. But, like, Japanese... Well, actually, I might have heard this. Maybe? <laughs> uh, um, you said it's free on Epic, right? Correct. I might even have it in my library if it's free. I did not, but I do now. Or will in like 30 seconds. And yeah, actually, you talked about this one. I think uh, you and Jared were hanging out yeah. playing this in voice chat, and I walked in on it. Possibly, but we were... We did play it together, and we enjoyed our time with it. It's quite fun, quite fast-paced, or can be slower-paced, depending on the build that you like decide with. There's a number of builds you can make in Damon X Machina that are quite, quite good. How weird do the builds get? Because you know I like to break my games. That's a good question. I haven't tried to make the weirdest possible build, but I'm pretty sure you can make some weird builds. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, you could just dual wield shields. Wouldn't do any damage, but I, you could do wield shields. I, I'm game. Let's go. <laughs> I'll do wield shields and beat the shit out of our opponents. I don't think you can punch people with shields, so you'd have to have something else with your shields. Like a missile launcher. Okay, I will just hold up shields and you can hide behind me, and occasionally I'll launch a missile. You can go for everything from du dual slabs of metal to double bazooka arms. 
Oh yeah, that's right. You could customize your mech to have an arm that is actually a weapon, which you're no longer able to switch weaponry out with that arm because the arm is a weapon. But, and this is a big but, it's generally more powerful than the weapons that you could swap to anyway. Like, as far as weapons in that class are concerned. Uh. It's okay, I'll just swap out both of my arms for big cannons. I mean that, you can do that. I don't want to switch weapons or do anything along those lines. I will just be cannon. Hell, I'll even remove my legs. Let's go. I... I don't think you can do that. <laughs> I, I, there, I, I actually don't know if there are legs that are basically like no legs and you're just hovering there. Because I technically didn't unlock all the parts. I was working on it at one point. Though I wasn't serious about it. You can also mount a back-mounted charged particle railgun. Jinra, stop telling, like, Sage a build that she would do. Just do wielding fucking bazookas and a particle railgun. Yes. <laughs> just the I do nothing other than blast. It's just the biggest, heaviest weapons platform that doesn't move, really. But if you're in line of sight, you're dead. But yeah, equip slots are left arm, right arm, left shoulder, right shoulder, and left shoulder, right shoulder are arm swappable munitions. So like, you could have an assault rifle in one arm, a beam sword in the other, and then on your shoulders you could have like, a cannon and a minigun. Well, mini is relative considering you're piloting a mech, but you know what I mean. And then shoulder mounted... And support slash utility. Those are all the slots. And I want to say the utility slot, you could have grenades. Ah, so I can do nothing but blast. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. You want a utility slot? Can I put grenades in that? Yes. <laughs> okay, then I'm not going to bring any utility. I will just bring explosions. A couple of types of grenades. This is true. <laughs> Which one has the biggest explosion? That's the one I want to take. <laughs> Sage is all in on this. Support can also be an ammo expansion. So it's ah, yeah, okay, great. More ammo for my explosions. So it's blast or more blast, your choice. <laughs> Bear in mind, this is the crazy lady that in Disgaea is the axe-wielding cleric. Yep. That was her idea. And by God, it weirdly works. What do you mean nearly? It totally works. I said weirdly. Oh, okay. My bad. Not cleric professor. What's the difference? I mean, at this point, I'm a professor, but the first time was a cleric. <laughs> there is a difference. Actually, no, I think it was just straight up the healer class. I mean, well, yes, that's what the class was technically called, but it was a cleric for all intents and purposes. There is a difference, I suppose. It's the types of abilities they get to use and their aptitude stuff. And the fact that they're good with guns and kind of good at staves. Because <laughs> my plan in Disgaea 4 for your character is I'm just going to teach Frederick, or Fenric, rather a bunch of axe-wielding abilities, and then I'm just gonna put you both on the same evil symbol, and then you're just gonna mooch off of his skills. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> you're just gonna <laughs> learn his abilities. <laughs> Professors also get better attack slash hit and less good at int slash SP. Oh, so what you're saying is that Sage is 
crazy idea is even more viable. Why not mooch off of Buka? Actually, touche. She already has axe-wielding skills. Yeah, we're gonna make you mooch off of Buka. And I understand you have no idea who this character is. Nope. I should get you a picture. Okay. Though I'm in the middle of a fate and I'm kind of avoiding dying. Because remember how you marveled that even early game enemies have don't stand in the spot or you die abilities? Yeah. I'm dealing with a lot of those right now. Wonderful. <laughs> it makes sense that that just goes up and up. Because even I've had to deal like four or five at a time at this point. Yep. Okay, do I have a brief moment of respite? I think I do. Okay. That's fine. Oop, well, don't do that. Get me emojis. Alright, so you already know what a pretty looks like, right? Sage. Sorry, say again. You already know what a pretty looks like, right? Pretty? From Disgaea, little penguin people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's your link. Yep, that links properly. That's Fuka. She is an incomplete pretty, technically. She's a human Incom soul. She's a human soul, so she died at one point, but they didn't have a pretty body to put her in, so they just gave her a hat that is, looks like a pretty. That's... Here's the thing. <laughs> she's also convinced she's dreaming? And not dead. Yeah, I'd think I was fucking dreaming too. What do you mean I, I was supposed to be turned into a penguin? But because you didn't have a spare body for me, you put a hat on me. What are you fucking... That is the most bonkers thing I've heard in a while. Yeah, I can see why she thinks she's dreaming. They had enough material of printy to make a printy hat. They didn't have enough material of printy to make a printy Hold body. Hold on a minute. The hat is made out of a... That is horrifying. Yeah, no. That's... She's not dreaming. She's having a nightmare. <laughs> that's like... Oh, yeah. You're going to be turned into a cat. But uh, we don't have enough cat bodies. We just have, like, a cat face. So I made a hat for you here. <laughs> what the fuck? That is so wrong. Well, the thing is, is that printies are, like shells bodies created to hold human souls so human souls in hell can repent for their sins and stuff that is still so wrong <laughs> oh my god welcome to disgaea But yeah, no, everybody that in the party, every time she's like, I'm dreaming, this is all a dream, everybody's like, God damn, you're delusional. I see why. <laughs> she sh probably should think that. It's all the others that are crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another thing. Prinnies in Disgaea, upon being thrown, like picked up and thrown, will explode. Can you pick her up and throw her? You can, but she does not explode. Well, at least that. <laughs> I, there is just something so horrible and wrong about that. I, <laughs> I mean, it's just creating an empty, like, vessel of a body and then stuffing a soul in it. <laughs> no comment on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> I... Nope, I give up. Look, to be fair, all the characters in Disgaea are demons. I mean, sure, but no. Evil. Yes! There, there's so much evil about that game. Yeah, because they are evil.
Has Sage watched slash read Bleach? No. No. I can say with some pretty, pretty certain certainty that no, Sage has not read or watched a Bleach. To be fair, neither have I. I haven't actually watched that many animes, and most of the ones that I have are not necessarily the most popular. Were you about to say Sword Art Online? Well, yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, that one's controversial for how honestly garbage the writing it is. Um, God, I can never think of the name of the other one that I really liked. It was... Hold on, I'm gonna Google it to see if I can find it. I don't think you've watched Madoka Magica, have you? No. You should, though. Um, let's see. Steins Gate. That, that one I really liked. But that, um, that one a lot of people like. Like, that one's actually good. Is that one actually, like, that popular? Because I've never seen... The only time I've ever heard anyone talk about Steins Gate was the person who introduced it to me. I've never heard anyone else talk about that one. Um, yeah, no, Steins Gate's actually weirdly... Well, not weirdly, it's popular. Though the like, I know that... The others, people that have seen it, all love it because it is really well written, and I would recommend everyone watch it. Yeah, but Steins Gate is definitely not niche if you're thinking it's niche. It, it certainly felt it last time I went looking into it. In the world of anime, uh, Steins Gate's not niche. Uh, okay, fair. Maybe it's because I don't hang out in that cir those circles. Uh, um... No, I definitely tried to get you to watch a couple of different anime as well, like Rising of the Shield Hero. The only because yeah, you've tried. Only because I know you would respect and appreciate the edge of the main protagonist, but you would fucking hate the first episode. That's kind of the problem. Is if I hate the first episode, I probably turn it off and never watch it again. Actually, makes me want to recommend the light novel instead to you because you probably wouldn't, you probably still wouldn't be fan, a fan of that moment, but it'd be more digestible reading it instead of hearing it voice acted and, an and seeing it animated on top of that. Uh, the way you put that scares me. That moment. <laughs> um, it's. I could probably spoil it. Basically. The crown princess of the kingdom accuses the protagonist of having uh, violated her sexually, but he didn't oh my. do that, so it's a false accusation, and because she's the crown princess... It sticks. It sticks. Uh, That's no. why you would hate that. Should have said I should have said like trigger warning real quick before I said all that. My apologies. I know I'm small time, but there's still like bit of etiquette I should like follow when it comes to talking about this topics like that. Even even if it's just to say something of that nature. But yeah, no, that's the only reason I say you'd hate the first episode. You're not wrong. <laughs> God damn it. At least it's not fucking Goblin Slayer, which I'm not even going to talk about that one. That one's fucked. That one, I haven't watched it, but I do kind of know what you're getting at that one. Yeah, and you, that one, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> that one gets fucked up really quick.
Actually, the only reason I know about the existence of that is because of News. the fucked up nature of it. New, yeah. Yeah. I'm still thinking of, like, other anime I've tried to get you to watch. I know I've tried to get you to watch Assassination Classroom. I did watch that one. You... Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? I watched the whole thing with one of my exes, and oh my god, I fell in love with that one. It's... I can never remember the name of it, because all I remember is Squid Teacher. <laughs> but... <laughs> I loved it. Every moment of that one had me giggling or... God, it ripped my fucking heart out. God, it did! Oh, um, it was so good! No, so I did watch that one. Um, you've tried to get me to watch My Hero Academia. I still have not watched that one. Yeah, I keep failing. Though, um, I, I've fallen a little bit behind as far as watching the anime is concerned. I've kept more up with the manga at this point. He says, having not gotten the most recent issue, I'm sure. Although, thinking about it, I think... No, you probably... On a conceptual level, you'd love My Hero Academia, though I don't know how much you'd be a fan of the main protagonist. From what I remember you telling me, I probably wouldn't like the main protagonist, so it'd kill me to see them be the main protagonist. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't think I've tried recommending Dr. Stone to you, even though I've made, I've only seen the first season of that. I know I haven't Good recommended night. Demon Slayer to you. Uh... You've talked about it a little bit. I have. It's... It's gorgeous as far as anime are concerned. God, what's that other anime that my ex got me to watch? Um... I remember reading that people didn't really like it, because it had similar writing problems to Sword Art Online in some cases. Um, that doesn't really narrow it down. You know what kind of <laughs> genre it was supposed to be? Uh, nope, that's not it. Um, probably wasn't like Sword Art Online. No, uh, there it is, Soul Eater. That <laughs> really? Yeah, I've watched that one. Um, and yeah, it has writing problems similar to Sword Art Online, and some of it was just really bad decisions on the writer's part. I still loved it. <laughs> that That's fascinating, because I watched a bit of Soul Eater, and I didn't feel that from the first few episodes I saw. You know what the crazy... It, it gets worse later on. Okay. It, like, the first few episodes are pretty great. It, it gets, like, there's, there's legitimate problems in the writing. I'm not <laughs> kidding. <laughs> did, did you know that that author made another manga and ergo another anime called Fire Force. Mm, mm -mm. Nope, and, did not know that. All right, I'm I'm fucking torn about Fire Force because it had such a strong premise and then burned it, no pun intended, because of its fucking Soul Eater-esque humor. Why does... um? That seems to be a really common problem with animes. It's like, oh, you have this really cool premise, and then you just fuck it. <laughs> like, I don't know why? how they do it. I don't know how they do it, Sage. I I kind of get it. It's because they get you know the budget of two shoestrings and like maybe a potato chip. <laughs> so like, I get how they're fucking it. It's because they don't have the... They also have really hard time constraints, right? So they can only right. do so much. Because but it, the fucking God, anime it industry sucks. in Japan is fucking brutal. It is super rude to its animators, but yeah. Because, like, what's... I'm, I'm working on thinking. What's another... Oh, Fairy Tale also fucking eats at me when I think about it. I've watched... <laughs> Like, I think a hundred ish episodes of Fairy Tale. Holy shit! Yeah, I don't remember any of it. <laughs> like, I, I actually legitimately remember basically none of it. It was that forgetful. I loved the premise, and I loved some of the characters involved with it, 
But I, I just don't remember any of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sage, I made it five episodes before I gave up. Uh, yeah, I watched about a... I want to say it was like close to 170, but I'm not sure. What the fuck? You know what? Actually, I might be able to find out exactly how many episodes I watched. I feel like um, between the two of us, you're more no-nonsense than me about anime. I'm shocked. I had a coworker. Um, so this was while I was working at Securitas. Okay. And this coworker would not shut the fuck up about it. Oh God. Okay. So I watched it just to try to keep up with him, and then eventually I got moved to a different post. And so because I got moved, I no longer had to deal with him. But I kept fucking watching it because it just sort of became habitual, right. which is why I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Jeez. It was something that I had as habit on my second monitor for months. Um, okay, hold on. Let's see if I can find out exactly how many episodes of that stupid fucking anime I watched. Uh, what is that? Uh, Crunchyroll? Is that the... Probably. Yeah, that's it. That's where I watched it. Though I think they were recently bought out by Funimation, which is a, a thing. And by recently, I mean relatively speaking. What do you mean that's not my password? Oh, that's my password, okay. Um, let's see. What was it called? Fairy tale, right? Yeah. Okay, so I've seen. Watch, watch, three minutes left. No, it doesn't have all this stuff I watched. It says I only watched up to episode 23 of season one, but I know for a fact I watched a lot more than that. Wolf, okay. But yeah, Jinra, see this, you mentioned Bleach and we went down an anime hole. Though, yeah, fairy tale. I honestly almost want to watch it again, just so that I can know what the fuck I was doing for like six months of my life. Don't! Spare yourself the torture! And I know, I uh, but I almost want to know, like, what was I doing for six months? Like, the, seriously, that's what has gone through my head when I think about that, like, time period. It's like, ah. Man. Oh, I, god damn it. Oh, it's this one. Uh, I, you probably haven't watched Angel Beats. That one. Uh... That one in the grand scheme of the anime world is pretty popular, though it's maybe a touch more obscure, especially nowadays. No, I haven't. Someone tried to get me to watch it, and they tried really fucking hard. Like, almost forced me to sit down and watch it at one point, but I don't remember who. Okay. It's a good thing they didn't succeed in forcing you to sit down and watch it, because that would have burned you so hard on it. What's up? You know, I think it was Andy. Now that I think about it. Oh God. Okay. It, so I, I think that's who tried to get me to force it, and that's why I haven't seen it actually, is because of just how hard they uh, she pushed me to try to see that one. Okay, fair. I. And it, yeah, at some point I just went fuck you. I'm just not gonna watch it because you want me to at this point. You you won't drop it and like let me think about it. So fuck you. I'm just not going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that totally doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> uh. You aren't nearly as bad as that was. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Because at least, like, with you, you'll be like, oh, here's some interesting detail that might entice you to watch it, right? You're not like, okay, Sage, I'm going to come to your house and then, like, s turn this on and you are going to watch it regardless of anything you say or not, right? Oh, goodness. I'm You're right, right. <laughs> that's that's also how I tried to get you into Fall Fantasy XIV. I'm like, mm, this is a juicy bit. I'm sure you love this. Yeah. Also, I'm missing what's going on Descendants in chat. Descendants of a bookworm. Yes, Jinra has spoken at length about how good that is. 
What? What's the premise of that, Jimra? So, I can briefly explain. It's another isekai sure. plot. As I, sorry, dumb that down. English, please. Uh, taken to another world due to certain circumstances. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, in this instance, the protagonist is, in their pa past life, was a librarian in our world. And they loved books. Like, genuinely, truly loved reading. However... Okay. They were crushed underneath a bookshelf to death. Very, oh. very ironic. That's awful, but okay. When she came to, she woke up in a new body, body of a little girl in another world. With a new life, basically. However, we're talking another world which is like fantasy-esque and... Okay, like, this is prop... Yeah, main characters make a bookworm, dies, reincarnates. A sick, poor commoner girl vows to make books before they die again. Like, in a world where books are not, like, printing pressable because the printing press has not been invented yet. So all books are uh, handwritten. Well, just invent the printing press. Voila. Yeah, very medieval era fantasy world. And like, the, the printing press is just such a simple machine. I feel like I would pick that to death because she just doesn't do that. Pro problem. Commoner girl. Young commoner girl. Not a lot of money. I mean, you don't necessarily need a ton of money to make that. The printing press is such a simple machine that it, it's honestly a bit of a wonder we didn't that someone didn't figure it out earlier. Also, lack of paper. Uh, the ill part is probably why she doesn't do it, honestly. Because otherwise, you can just wait until you're an adult, get a bit of money from a job, and then invent it and be rich, right? But if she's ill, yeah. But it's there. There's actually, honestly, it I'm, sounds relatable. There's a lot of things that get in her way as far as being able to progress with this dream. And paper isn't a thing. People are still writing on parchment and like slabs. I mean, parchment, you can make a book out of parchment. That's, That's not necessarily expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Uh, but you can't. OK, so yeah. it, it sounds like a relatable plot at the very least, which is better than most anime. Frankly, most of it is not relatable in the slightest. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Like, oh, yeah, you're stuck in a VR nightmare, sort of, not fine. <laughs> or, oh, you go to school to learn to murder people because you work for the Grim Reaper, Soul Eater. <laughs> or time travel, Steins Gate. <laughs> like, most of that does not have relatable premises in the slightest, but this one seems at least closer to relatable. A single sheet of parchment will cost her father a month's income. That's how poor her family is. Shit. Yeah. Um, okay. So they're serfs. Basically just slightly better than slavery. I, yeah, basically. Okay. So you have to invent both paper and the printing press. Ah, fuck it. Yeah, um, at that point, I see the problem. <laughs> on a fucking, sh like, worse than a shoestring budget. Like you have a particle of dust as your budget. Ah. <laughs> and you're also like 12 at most from what I'm gathering. N no, I think younger, like seven. Ah, ah, okay. Like you, um, you still have much and more of your memories of your past life, technically, but um, nobody's really gonna take you seriously. Five, even five. better. See, I feel like if you could invent that at the age of, like, six, like, just take a year and really push this idea of, okay, I'm going to make the printing press and I'm going to make paper to make books affordable. If you could manage that, you would be, like, seen similar to how Mozart is seen, like a child prodigy type. Jenner, do you Which want might get enough attention that, like, you would be, like, well-off financially at that point, but getting there is a bitch. <laughs> Jinder, do you want to tell her, or...? Oh, God. Don't. Uh, this one sounds like one I might watch, so don't tell me. Okay. 
What is it called? Ascendance of a Bookworm. Is it on? It is on Crunchyroll, actually. And it's dubbed. Thank fuck. Man, uh, that's how good it is. It got a dub on Crunchyroll. I tend to not watch anime. Actually, that's one of the things that kills a lot of anime for me, is if it not, it's not dubbed. Oh, man. Um... Because I can't stand watching subbed things, because then my eyes are focused on, like, the words, and I don't see any of the visual effects. Oh, tunnel vision, okay. Yeah, I tunnel vision hard when I'm reading. Like, I, um, it was bad enough that as a kid, um, in school, I can think of multiple times where, like, the teachers would have to damn near slap me to get me to pay the fuck attention in class, because, oh, this is reading hour, and then they try to move on to something else, and I just did not hear them. <laughs> oh, jeez. So I tunnel vision hard when I'm reading. That's why I won't watch things that are subbed. All right, perk to being autistic, because I can do both. E although it does come off as rude. Yeah, it, I just... Uh, see, I can multitask really well, like, scary well in a lot of cases, but when it comes to reading, for some reason, I just can't. Nope. <laughs> Your brain's like, ah, yes, the words. Let me paint you a picture and just mute the world around you. I'm sorry, somebody's talking to you, and they're about to come up and slap you. See, like, when we're playing Stellaris, I'll have Stellaris going, I'll have my music going, sometimes I even have a show on my second monitor going, I'm talking to Elaine, I'm talking to whoever the fuck is in voice chat with me, and I manage it all beautifully. The second I try to read something, I'm like, I, lo I lose time. It's like, oh, I have to read this event. It's five minutes later. Fuck, my economy's in shambles. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> See, I have an I have an interesting problem where I could probably do like multiple visuals, but I'm not able to do multiple audio sources. Audio and visual I do just fine. It's just when I have to fucking read it. <laughs> right, but like Actually you've had that heard that probably a couple times tonight while we've been talking. As yeah. I'm doing quests and trying to read them and then you're like Sage? Sage? It's every time it's because I'm reading the fucking dialogue. You're getting into it, which Frankly, yes. I'm just... Like, I'm actually now about to start another fucking quest, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just logging off now, because I I can't I can't actually play the game and, like, read the quest if I'm talking to you. <laughs> Fair. Uh... And this is, this is probably why you have a solo and a um, group account, or group character for this game. The group character is the one that I'm supposed to be experiencing the story on. The the solo character, I'm supposed to be just burning through it and not giving a fuck. <laughs> but I, god damn it, one of the quests with the dialogue, it was the kneel one. Where it's like, yeah, if you want to go in there, you better kneel in front of that captain. I, I couldn't, I was just so baffled by it, I started reading the dialogue at that point. I was level like 2 and the game fucking caught. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean I have to kneel in front of this bitch? I, I don't want to kneel in front of them. I have pride. Ah, oh, god damn it. Fine, I'll give up my pride for the experience points. <laughs> That's beautiful. The game bewildered you hard <laughs> enough that you're like, wait a minute. Excuse me? What? What? Why? I have to do the emo? This isn't Yeah, this I've isn't never a seen a game make me. Yeah, I've never seen a game make you emo before like this. So I, uh, that's going to be the one thing I take away from Final Fantasy is just like, wow, you can make emoting a, p a game mechanic. Like, who would have fucking thought? <laughs> what crazy ass developer came up with that idea? <laughs> Looks at the dev team of Final Fantasy 14. Those guys. Yeah, but which one of those crazy motherfuckers did it? <laughs> <laughs> Just watching you on your stream now, murdering random shit on the moon and flying around. I'm on the moon! Yes. Still makes no goddamn sense, but okay. <laughs> I, I will accept that, and I don't want you to explain it to me either. Well, now I won't, because... Spoiler reasons. Yeah.
they, they've done some creative things with the game mechanics in this. I, I, I like the direction that Final Fantasy seems to be going, at least based on my early gameplay experience. Right. But I, I don't know how they fucking made side quests interesting. Like, that's the thing that has baffled me. Is like, the main quest I expected to be, like, make enjoyable, right? Especially since it's a... I, I want to say it was Jesse Cox who put it as this is an RPG MMO, yeah, right? Yeah, Not Jesse an MMO RPG. And so I kind of expected the main story quest to be like interesting and grab my attention, but I didn't expect the fucking side quest to make me care about the goddamn farmers. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna catch your dodo for you. God, why do I care about the dodos now? <laughs> Me, Why do I, I care that they are gonna die if I don't capture them? Ugh. <laughs> this is beautiful. There's another game that I would define as an RPG MMO uh, is SWOTOR. Right. But I'm sorry, the side quests don't fucking matter in that one 90% of the time. There's a couple side quests that are pretty good, and you know when they happen because the the quality of the quest goes up significantly for those. But generally speaking, it's just some main story quest that matters. So that's what I expected, not to care about goddamn dodos on that fucking farm. And I want to go back and see what else is going on. <laughs> but I'm overleveled, so I'm not going to be able to do that until I decide to level another class. <laughs> I am just over here giggling. Uh, I'm just about to think 20. I'm like... 3% off ish. <laughs> like, I, when you explained to me that, like, you can play every single class on a single character, I was like, ah, so there's never a reason to make an alt. But now I get why there's alts. It's so that you can experience the story from, like, a different perspective. Mm hmm. Because, like, starting off in Limza, Limoza, Limza, whatever. Limza, I don't know Lominza. How to... Limza, Lominza. Christ. What a fucking tongue twister of a name. Anyway, like, starting off there, my entire experience is very coded in the pirates and sea shanties and all that stuff. I bet if I started in a different city, I'd have a different perspective on the game. Yeah, you do. And I've noticed that, and all, all three of my alts all have different starting areas. Yeah. Yeah. And, god damn it, I'm probably going to make multiple alts in this game, and I'm, again, losing hundreds of hours of my life to this fucking game. I see it happening already. Oh, my face hurts. I'm smiling too hard. I should... See, here's the thing that's really kicking me, is I feel like I should have gotten into the game sooner. And I'm like, god damn it, any time I think I should have gotten into the game sooner, I end up playing for, like, years and getting into the raiding scene, and, uh... <laughs> <sighs> the worst part is, is, I feel like part of that reason why you didn't get into it sooner is because I pushed too hard early on. No, honestly, the only reason I'm playing now is because Elaine decided to play. All right. And she's actually sitting right next to me playing right now. So, like, she seems to be at least equally interested. And she was messaging me while she was at work telling me she was excited to play. But, um, no, because she decided to actually buy it and play it, I decided to. It was like, well, at least I'll have my girlfriend here if the game's boring. And she'll make it interesting. Fair enough. And plus, you actively have somebody to talk to while going through this quest to, ha like, discuss your own theories and such, who's not going to be me and have to be coy and pretend not to know all that much. Which is, yeah. which is largely well, it, Jared's experience. And the dumb thing is, is that because I pl we're actually both playing solo characters, I got no idea what she's going through, and I she has no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I talked a little bit about how... Um, I had to, you know, capture the dodos and put them in dodo-sized sacks because I thought that was just fucking hilarious. But aside from that, she has no idea what the questing area is like. <clears throat> yeah, because she um, started in Gridania because she's a conjurer, right? No, she, um, that's our character that we're going to be playing together, which oh, we still okay. haven't. 
Uh, she made a, uh... What did you make? A gladiator. Okay, sword and board. Yeah, so she made a gladiator to play solo. So she's an old and I, Yeah, and I have no idea what's going on. Like, the only thing I've seen is what I've seen over her shoulder. And, like, the scene with the, you know, twirly mustache. <laughs> little, whatever the short people are. Lalafell. Lalafell, yeah, the fucking hilarious imagery. That, um, that is glorious. So I still have no one to talk to about this without being without them being coy, because I'm like, I kind of have an idea of what's going on, and I have my theories, and I'm pretty sure I've already called the plot thus far. Actually, I did, because I just finished the story quest for the kidnappings. Um, But I, I don't have anyone to talk to about it, so I'm having to just sort of shut up so I don't spoil anything for Elaine for when she eventually gets there. And we still have the whole other city with our my archer and her conjurer to see. That's true, that's true. And that one, that one you will be able to talk to each other together. Uh, yeah. After you get out of the city, like, all three city starts will, like, homogenize into a single route. Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Which I think I'm about at that quest where it's gonna send me to another city. It kind of feels like I finished Limza Limon. Lim <laughs> whatever. You'll get it. You'll get it. Trust me. No, I won't. It's a tongue twister, and I, uh. Oh. If nothing else, just call it Limza. Yeah, Limza. That's what I'll probably end up. Did you know I have speech impediments? Well, and for some fucking reason, the second word in that is just impossible for me to pronounce. It's, it's like a YouTuber I watch who's unable to say fuel. God, I I feel that. I, I can pronounce fuel just fine, but, like, there's just some words that trip me up like that, and they shouldn't. Right, I feel that. Uh, I... I what was the area... No, I don't think any... Well, no, Limza Lominza did trip me up for a while. Because even I was like, what the fuck is this place called? How the hell do you pronounce this? Limza Lo... Limza... Limza... Limza Lair... Larry? Limza Larry? You just call it Limza Larry. Limza Lo Mary, Jesus Christ, you. <laughs> uh, oh god, I've been going for like two hours on stream. I lost track of time because we were talking about anime and this and such. That That is a good moment when that happens, honestly. Yeah, you just lose track of time because you're having fun. But always great. Always the best. I suppose I can wrap up after I'm done with this harrowing experience harrowing experience what makes the grind so harrowing good question Whoa. what what is elaine woeing about uh there's a level 50 mob in the area oh and so she so yesterday um i was playing and there was this level 50 like dragon looking creature and I didn't think it would attack me, so I walked up to it and it was just looking at it going, Oh, this is so cool! And then it fucking one-shot me out of nowhere. And I bitched to her about it, because I'm like, What the fuck is this? Why is this in a level 10 area if it's going to be aggressive if I walk up to it? So she, so she sees this level 50 mob and is like, Oh, I probably should not walk up to it, even if it is cool. So, that is um what, are, what is called a hunt. And uh, there's actually a way to tell whether a mob will be hostile to you or not. Uh, whenever you see a mob that you can attack out in the field, if you look to the left of its name, it should have a colored symbol next to it. If the symbol is like a whitish blue, it's not hostile. If the symbol is red, it is hostile. And funnily enough, there's at least one boss in a dungeon in the game that starts non-hostile. 
that you can just walk up in front of and it won't attack you to start. Huh. It's a fun little thing that I like to show off to people as when I go through that dungeon if I'm the tank. Or even the DPS, just run up to the boss and be all like, Haha, it's not going to attack me. Maybe give the tank a heart attack, like, what are you doing? Honestly, that sounds fantastic, and I'm glad I'm not playing a tank. <laughs> because I know that when we eventually, or when I eventually start doing dungeons, you're going to do that to me. <laughs> we'll get into that for the first time, and then you're going to charge ahead as the DPS, and I'm healing, and you're like... And I'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I'll be all like, see? Docile. I'll have to check for that symbol, because I haven't seen... Actually, I'm watching your stream now. That blue symbol next to the striking dummy, is that the one you're talking about? Yipper. I can actually go to a different area that's um, lower leveled to also demonstrate this a little bit better. I don't know that I've seen that symbol at all. That one, I think, is specifically for the striking dummy. Okay. Like the shape of it, anyway. This should be a good direction to hopefully find a couple of different mobs, though I think an even lower level area is best. Because once Where you start... This? Uh, this is Costa del Sol, which is still oh, okay. in the area of Limza Lomenza, but it's later on. Yeah, I haven't quite got there yet, but I have seen it on the map. So this symbol on the snipper, right next to its name. Is that an option you have to turn on? Because I have never seen that. It might be. You'd have to double check, see, pay attention to it. Nope, that's not unique to the um, striking dummy. No, actually, I'm looking on the lane screen, and I see the same symbol for the striking dummy. And, yeah, okay. I, either I'm blind, or there's an option I need to turn on and didn't know about. Or both, maybe? Hello. Hello, little guy. Huh. Well, I'm level 88, so these guys wouldn't attack me anyway. Well, yeah, because they'd be like, that's a death sentence. <laughs> they look at Wait, me and they're like, did you just pet that? Yeah, I did. Aw, that, that was so cute. <laughs> Okay, well, now I'm less lost about how to tell if something's... Because in WoW, it's super obvious. Like, the mob is going to have a yellow name if it's docile or a red name if it's going to fucking bite you. Yeah. In in Final Fantasy XIV's defense, as you go through the expansions, which is actually a mild complaint of mine, you will find very few mobs that won't attack you out in the field. Which is... Fair. Most MMOs do that. They usually only have the docile enemies for, like, early levels, so that you can... They can start introducing that mechanic for people who have never played an MMO before. Like, yeah, this thing might just bite you if you get too close. And learning aggro ranges and such. Yep. And then I do have a house. <laughs> I don't even want to know how much you fucking spent on that, because I know it's going to be a disgusting amount of gill that right now would give me a heart attack. 13 million. God, I said I didn't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost have a million. All right. You just are almost sitting on a million right there. Jesus. And to be fair, that's not even close to being, like, remotely rich. It just basically pays for all of the times I want to teleport. And that's about it. Hmm. How do you change your character pose? Because I, I was looking and saw that people were standing around like you were, but, oh. like, I couldn't find that. Nobody's chatting right now, so let me just, like since I'm still streaming and you're still watching this. Let me just turn the ch chat sensor off. I don't know if you'll be able to read the uh, chat box. But what you do is you type in forward slash C pose for C change pose. Okay. And your character will change their um, idle animation. Aww. Okay. 
And I assume it just cycles. Um, I have it set to be static, actually. So whatever. No, I mean like every time you type C pose, it'll. Yes. Chain. Okay, and just a predictable cycle. Yep. Uh, something else you can do. I thought there was a way. Was it under? It's under character. Right. You can do randomize idle animation in the character options menu. And it huh. should... I want to say you'll start to cycle if you do... Well, maybe not. Am I mistaken? But it is in character configuration, control settings, under character. And you can change huh. things like your idle animation delay. Uh, you can change your auto sheath delay so once combat ends, how long it takes for you to put your weapons away. What does manually adjust Pfizer do? Not a lot, unfortunately. So, if you're wearing a piece of headgear that um, has, like, a face guard or something, usually manually adjust visor will, like, prop it from, like, a close to an open setting, or vice versa. Huh. But not many pieces of gear actually have that. Not, relatively speaking, not that many. Huh. Neat. I, I feel like this is going to be one of those games where, like, even three years in, I'm going to learn something basic of, in the settings, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That's very possible. There are people that don't know that if you right-click your currency here, if you have multiple forms of common currency, it'll cycle between them. See, I, well, I didn't know that, but I only have two currencies. And actually, I don't even know how I got the second one. I, I just sort of randomly stumbled upon it and at some point <laughs> probably murdered a mob. What, did you, what currency did you get? I don't know, and I'd have to log in to check. Oh. It, uh, some random token thing. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Weird. So if you just walk up to that entrance, are the doors going to open and let you walk in, like, gates and stuff? Or is it, like, going to make you load into the house? It's going to make me load into the house. Oh, okay. I don't know that I like how they zone things and how, like... But it's kind of weird getting used to that, but I... It makes some sense for performance reasons, but I, I don't know how I feel about it right now. It... It's a lot of loading. I get that. Uh, though, I will say, I have not had a single issue with performance playing on maximum graphics settings. You, so, it, it's very well optimized. You got a beast of a computer, too. But, yeah. Eh, not a beast at this point. Because, well, I have... Not the top-of-the-line AMD processor, but it was the last generation's top-of-the-line processor. And, um, but I'm still sitting on the uh, GTX Titan X. I forget which edition. Um, but the plan was for me to upgrade GPUs at some point, like, last year, and then the fucking shortages and shit happened to murder that idea. Yeah, th thanks. Thanks, Bitcoin miners, you Fucking assholes. Yeah, that and also the COVID shortages and uh, all sorts of garbage. That doesn't um, help. I'm actually almost tempted to buy one because I had my student aid in, uh, come in and I'm like, maybe I should. But I'm kind of holding off until after tax season is done. Fair. All right, I'm going to start a raid for the stream. Okay. But yeah, this was super fun. I'm glad I had you around, because we got into some conversations, and that was good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thanks to the fine folks in the chat for sticking around as long as they did, watching me play Final Fantasy XIV and listening to me rant like a lunatic about various things. I appreciate it. Please remember that you're always welcome here at Mana's Potion. And I'll see you next time.